all right what's up youtube welcome to blue chip prospect once again so today we're going to be doing something a little bit different in the sense that we're not going to be talking about a player but i'm going to be presenting my top 10 and the way it's going to work is i'm going to go from 10 to 1 and for each player i'm going to present the overall draft ranking from different outlet uh, we're going to be talking about his stats we're going to look at player comp in their draft year and i'm also going to be presenting my strength and weaknesses card for each of those players all right so let's get this started so one thing I wanted to say before I keep going is that this is not a mock draft, it's my own ranking. It's based on viewings that I had, it's based on stats, it's based on the whole body of work of those players. In no way does it represent what I think is going to go down on, on draft day. I mean, I'm 100% sure that some of those players are not going to be picked in the top 10. So that gives opportunity for a steal later in the draft. But take, take it with a grain of salt and see it more as a talent evaluation ranking than a a mock draft or a draft ranking all right so uh let's keep this going all right so first thing first at number 10 i place mr matthew savoy uh you're gonna see this draft is a little weird in the sense that it, it's known to be a little bit weaker but i say that it's mostly weaker at the very top like number one two three are not necessarily great values at number one two three but uh it's still deep like it's deep in high-end talent like it can go up to maybe 12 or 13 so uh, to find a player like Matthew Savoy at number 10 I mean that's that's pretty good all right so uh, consolidated draft ranking on elite prospect we can see is ranked number six but you can see all the other outlets where they place him and there's a Craig button to put him at number 17 that would be a hell of a steal but um, yeah <laughs> that's it uh, here we're going to take a look at his stats for this uh, this season. He has 90 points in 65 game, which is a very good production. Uh, I didn't like his second half of the season. I preferred his first half, so we'll see where that goes. I hope he has a really good season next year so we can uh, erase all doubts from people's mind. But uh, yeah, per comparison, we can see here that uh, at number 13, He's a uh, 1.39 point per game and player, player he has around him or a player like uh, Nolan Patrick, <laughs> Cody Glass, uh, not great names like I said in my video before, but he's also over players like uh, Matthew Barzal, it's pretty close to player like Connor Zary, uh, Ryan Nugent Hopkins, so this is the type of player where he's placing around, alright, and strength and weaknesses. Uh, here I put his skating at 8 out of 10 because he's a really good skater, Aki Sand 7, Playmaking 8, Compete 7, Shot 7, Puck Skill 7. He's a really good playmaker and a really good shooter so he's a, he's a dual threat and he competes really hard. The fact that he's 5 foot 9 and a good skater, I mean he has a future in the NHL, I'm 100% sure. But um, yeah, the fact that he competes hard will help him a lot. Alright, so let's go to the next one. So at number 9, I have from Russia, Mr. Danila Yurov. So we can see his ranking is pretty much all over the place. Uh, Plays like Ely Prospect and Smat, Smat Scouting <laughs> have him in the 20s. I mean, that would be the steal of the draft if that would happen. So that would be good for, for that team. Uh, he played 21 game in the KHL, 23 game in the MHL. In the KHL, he played something like 3-4 minutes a night. So um, not really an opportunity to score there. And uh, in the MHL, he completely destroyed it with 36 points in 23 games. So that is really good. If we look at other players from the MHL in their draft year, we can see that he's right up there with Nikita Kucherov, uh, Pavel Dorofeyev, uh, Rodin Amirov, Nikita Gusev. So a couple good players around there. You can see Artemi Panarin right there. So uh, yeah, I think it's it's looking good for him. If we take a look at the strength and weaknesses card, uh, is skating, really good skater, very powerful skater, 8 out of 10. Hockey sense and playmaking, 6.5 and 7. I think he's a better playmaker than a shooter, but he still has a good shot at 6.5. Competes fine. Uh, he's, he has, he's a good two-way player. He's not like a big hitter or anything like that, but he's a good two-way player, so compete at average in HL. Uh, and puck skill, 8 out of 10. He has soft hands and fast hands. Uh, he has one of the best set of hands in the in the draft, I'm pretty sure. All right, so let's jump to number 8. So here at number 8, I have Mr. Denton Matejchuk. So um, once again, the draft ranking is all over the place. Uh, Bob McKenzie, who has him at number 29. Wow. <laughs> that's, that's just crazy. Uh, look. 
I'm not saying he's the best defenseman in the draft, but would I be surprised if he end up being the best defenseman in the draft? Not for a second. He's electric. He's amazing. And he's still 17 years old. Okay, His, his date of birth is July 12th. So he's like super young and extremely talented. It's crazy. But you can see here the consolated is number 14. E prospect uh, agrees with me. Number 8. Uh, same thing with Dauber Prospect, number 8, but if not, it's all over the place. All right, so here we're going to take a look at his stats. He destroyed the WHL for a defender. Uh, 64 points for in 65 games, pretty much point per game. And in the playoff, 10 points in 10 games. So I don't know what you want more from a defender on the offensive side. So <laughs> I mean, that's really good. If we take a look at players around him in their draft year, we have Morgan Riley. And now we have Morgan Korczynski, who's in the same draft, obviously. Cannon uh, Addison, uh, Dan Amius, Ivan Provorov, Ty Smith, Bowen Byram. So all players that are pretty close to each other. Now there's the new sensation, Olin Zellweger, which is a little bit higher. Uh, yeah, so I mean, a lot of good players around him. And he's going to be a stud. <laughs> There's no debating that. Uh, strength and weaknesses. Skating, 8 out of 10. I, I debated putting him at 9. He's so good in every direction. It's not that much about straight line speed. It's really about agility and four-way mobility. It's, it's just so good. Hockey sense, one of the best in the draft. He's just... It's like he knows, every, he knows everything around him. His awareness is amazing. Playmaking skill... Out of this world, eight out of ten. Compete. I mean, he's a five foot eleven defender, so you can't expect too much out of him. But he has a good stick, and he will close his gap really fast, so that's not a problem. His shot, six point five. He has a good. He has a good shot. It's not a powerful shot, but he has a good shot. And uh, his puck skill, six point five out of ten. Uh, could put it at seven. It's, his strength is not necessarily the puck skills or the shot. It's really the playmaking and the hockey sense, the way he understands the game, the way he's in, like. He's two, three play in front of everybody in his head. So, and then you add his skating, <laughs> it makes a pretty lethal player. And here I'm gonna add the little card for him from uh, Mitch Brown. That's his stats in transition, entries, exit, defense, passing, shooting. You can see like he's. He's just a phenomenal player. <laughs> okay, so I, mean, I put him on number eight because I, I didn't want to put him like higher than that because then there's going to be people who say, yeah, that doesn't make sense. But he, he's a hell of a player and wouldn't be surprised if he ended up the best defenseman, but that's a bit of a stretch. All right, so let's go to number seven. So here at number seven, I have big boy Cutter So uh, one, one thing that, I, that I'm seeing is I don't usually look at draft rankings and I also I never look at draft rankings like back to back while recording. So, but now that I'm seeing that, it's I can see that it's always all over the place. Like we can see here, Pocket already have him at number twenty eight, while others have him at number seven. How do you put twenty seven player in front of Cutter Goti? Uh, I don't know how that's possible. I don't know how you can find twenty seven player in this draft that that's better than him i mean when if you can draft a player that's six foot three 200 pound that skates like him that understands the game like him that shoots the buck like him that plays the middle of the line like him uh i don't know how you get that at 28 but anyway i respect their opinion i just don't share it all right so let's go take a look at uh, his stats uh, for the program he played 54 games scored 65 points for 34 goals it's not the greatest production but it's a it's still a good production if we take a look at players around him in their draft year, player like Zach Parise, uh, Joel Farabee, Matt Boldy, he's a little bit behind Frank Nazar, but not by much. Uh, yeah, I think he's going to be a hell of a player, honestly. <laughs> uh, I could see him becoming like same type of production as Matt Boldy. Matt Boldy is not as good as a skater, uh, Scott or Gauthier, or not even as good as a shooter, but he has better soft skill. Like He's a better passer and better... Um, Puck handler, if you want, but I th I can see the same type of production for those player. And if we take a look at the strength and weaknesses, we can see that he's a seven out of ten for skating. I could debate for a seven point five. Uh, it's, it's hard to see sometimes because when the the more the player are big, the the more their 
their skating is hard to evaluate on the speed, but it's obvious that he's a good skater, a great skater, a fast skater, but just is he really high end? I'm not willing to put that. So 7, 7.5. Hockey sense, really good, 7.5 out of 10. Playmaking, 6.5 out of 10. Not his strength, still very good. Compete, really good, 7 out of 10. Um, he's not going to go out of his way to hit people for no reason, but he wants to drive the middle lane, so he's going to go there. That's, so that's good. His shot, 8 out of 10. He has a really good shot, and he always shoots it from the middle, so <laughs> that's good. And puck skills, uh, it's not his strength. The, the, the soft skills are not his strength, but uh, still pretty good at 6.5. So in the end, if you get a player that can skate like he does, that has the understanding of the game like he does, and he shoots the puck like he does, and has the size that he has at six foot three, two hundred pounds, and probably gonna play something around two hundred and ten pounds. I mean, at number seven, it's pretty rare that those players are available. That's what I was saying about the the depth of this draft. Like you don't like there's the the high end of this draft is not amazing, but it's deep in high quality players all right so let's jump to number six so here at number six is where people will start to disagree with me strongly uh but like i said at the beginning this is a talent evaluation ranking and not a mock draft or anything i don't, I don't take into account anything else than what i saw okay so at number six i have ivan miroshnichenko okay i understand the health issues i understand that we don't know how he's going to come back from it uh, obviously right now there's good news but uh, we don't know if he's gonna come back to the player what he was but in terms of talent from what I saw in the last two years from him uh, he's definitely a top 10 player which is why I place it at number six all right so if, if we take a look at his stats we can see here that uh, last year when he played at the U18 uh, he had eight points in seven game and six goal which is, was really goal uh, really good for the age uh, this year in the VHL, 16 points, 10 goals in 31 games. Still really good. And after that, well, he got the bad news. And from there, we'll see where it goes. Um, if we take a look at players uh, that were drafted from the VHL, there's not a lot <laughs> to look at. But we can see he's in the same stratosphere as uh, Valery Nichushkin uh, or other player like Vasily Pakolzin, which he has a much better production then. But there's not a lot of player in there that you can look at in your life. And, uh, you like oh those are stars <laughs> right. so uh let's go take a look at the strength and weaknesses skating eight out of ten hockey sense six playmaking 6.5 compete eight shot eight puck skills eight so you can see there's a lot of eight there he's a great skater he competes really hard for the puck all the time shoots with the best of them in this draft and his puck skills are amazing he's not the greatest playmaker he does cheat when he's playing in the offense, he's going to wait at the line to receive a pass and then go. But, I mean, with his size, his compete, his shot, his skill, his skating, if he comes back to what he was, uh, whoever's going to pick him, because it's not going to be in the top 10, it's going to be maybe in the 20s, maybe in the 30s, maybe even later, I don't know. But whoever's going to pick him, if he comes back to who he was, that's going to be the steal of the draft. He's an amazing player. Let's jump to number five. So here at number five, I have big boy defender, Mr. David Giricic. So we can take a look at his ranking and we can see that it's getting much tighter than it, than it was in the previous players. Uh, pretty much everybody has him in their top 10, except for recruit scouting, who's at number 11. But pretty much all between number 2 and number 6, 7, something like that. So that's uh, that's a good sign. To take a look at his stats, we can see 11 points in 29 games. Uh, five points in eight games at the U20, and when he came back from his knee injury, he played at the World Championship and had two points in five games, so that's uh, really good. I'm sure a lot of scouts were happy to see him play and see him produce. So, yeah, if we take a look at the player comp, he's right in between Tomasz Plekanec and Martin Nikac. Uh, I mean, those are forwards, so <laughs> it's really good that your defensive player has the uh, same type of point production. Because he plays a really good game defensively too, so it, like he could be he could be a jackpot type of player. Like you get a player that's big, uh, is physical, he's aggressive defensively, aggressive offensively. So uh, he could be a really good player. So if we take a look at his strengths and weaknesses, his skating six out of ten. I saw a lot of people t say that his skating is good. Uh, I, I don't see it. I mean, it's, it's fine. It's fine. It's NHL average, but I, I wouldn't put anything more than that uh it's like first is 
his, uh, his stride is a bit weird, but he's not he's not fast like going forward or going backward or even his sideway mobility is not that great. Uh, hockey sense, it's really good. Seven out of ten. Playmaking, seven out of ten. Compete. Uh, here in compete, I put eight out of ten, but it's because of the way he plays. He's an aggressive player in the sense that he's, he, de he defends aggressively and he attacks aggressively. So uh, if you compare to, let's say, uh, uh, Nemet, Nemet is a lot more passive in the way he plays than uh, than uh, Jiricic. So that's why I put his compete at eight. His shot, he probably has the biggest slap shot in the draft. So eight out of ten, and his puck skills six out of ten. He's just not his strength. All right, but overall, a great player that's probably gonna end up being at the at the minimum a top four and a very good chance of being a, a top line defender. All right, so let's go to number four. So here at number four, I place Mr. Logan Cooley. So I just did a video on him saying pretty much everything that I'm going to be saying now. So I'm not going to go into too much details. But if we take a look at his rankings, uh, we can see he's pretty much number two on everybody's board except a couple, like maybe one at number three and Elite Prospect at number four. Um, if we take a look at his stats, we can see that he had a really good year. 75 points for 51 game in the program, so that is really good. And the WGC 18, 18, po uh, 18 points, 10 points in 6 games. So, overall, uh, great production, just not an amazing production. Like I said in the video, if we take a look at the player comp, uh, players around him, we can see Cole Caulfield, Trevor Zegras, a uh, player like James Van, Reems James Van Reemsdijk, uh, Matt Boldy. So, all really good players around him, so... Uh, I mean, he's going to have a great career, I'm pretty sure. Uh, and if we take a look at his strength and weaknesses, his skating is one of the best in the draft, if not the best in the draft, so uh, 8 out of 10. Hockey sense, 6.5. I already said why I didn't think it was that high. It's because he often gets into trouble by his own making. Uh, his playmaking is super good. Compete is, is good too. And he has a good two-way game. His shot is great. Puck skills are amazing. So, uh, yeah, pretty much that's what it is for Logan Cooley. Let's go see number three. So here for my first player in the top three, it's Juraj Slavkowski. So if we take a look at the rankings, we can see that pretty much everybody has him three, four, five. I know, I think it's Corey Proman to have him at number one. I'm not 100% sure, but I think it is. Uh, so... One of the one of the reason why he's not number one or number two on everybody's list is his Liga production. So if we take a look here at the production, we can see that he played 31 game, had 10 points. You see, <laughs> that's the concern because everything else is phenomenal. Like all his international game, like is, is uh, at the Olympic, he had seven goals in seven games. In the double, you see that he just played. He had nine points in eight games. So. This is phenomenal production, but then you compare it with the Liga, and it's hard to judge which one is the real Slavkowski. Is he in between that? Is he international Slavkowski, or is it easy Liga Slavkowski? We don't know, and we'll see in the future. Uh, if we compare a player in the Liga, we can see there's absolutely nobody that you would like to pick number two, three, four uh, around him. Like, I mean, Kasper Kapanen is a good player, but you don't want him at number two, three, four. Same thing for Rasmus Kupari and stuff like that. But now, if you do the same thing and you look at him in the World Championship, then the only player in the last since 2000 that I've, I've made better than him is Patrick Liney. If not, then he's better than Austin Matthew, better than Kako, better than Eichel, Tricedo, Jack Hughes, Mort Sider. So his production in terms, of, in terms of point per game in the World Championship is amazing. And the World Championship, let's not forget that a lot of those are NHL players. So, I like you want to pick him, and you want Slavkowski to be this guy, not the Liga guy. But you don't know, so <laughs> that's why on some people's list he's out of the top three. But uh, with the size, the skating, the shot, and the board play, and what he showed internationally, I mean, it's safe to put him in your top three and expect a very, very good production from him. All right, let's go see number two. So here at number two, I have Simon Nemetz. So. I kept Shane Wright at number one because of the past and not because of the present. Because if he can come back to the player he was, then you get a real player and is the best player in this draft by a long shot. But if he doesn't, 
then Simon Nemetz is the only one that consistently showed that he's an elite, he's an elite player. Like he has everything that you want from a number one overall in the sense that he has the skills, he has the size of a of a number one overall, he has the he has the skating of a number one overall, and he has produced through multiple years in multiple tournament, multiple league. Okay, so he's the only one that consistently showed I'm an elite player. All right, so let's go take a look at his stats. So even if we start with the stats of last year where he had 19 points in 37 game as a kid in a men's league, it was already really good. And then you jump to this year where he had 26 points in 39 games and added 6 points in 8 games at the World Championship. That's just phenomenal. And then you top it off with the playoff where he had 17 points in 19 games. So not only is he elite through multiple year, he's also showing you that he's a clutch player and when it matters, he's going to bring his A game and he's going to win it for you. So I don't know what you want more from a defenseman, but he's bringing it, he's bringing it at all. All right, so let's go take a look at the player comp and here there's not many player to compare him to because there's not a lot of player coming out of the Slovakian league. So there's last year there was Brent Clark, uh, which has similar production, a little bit under, but still similar. But overall, Simon Nemet is a better player than Brent Clark, even if the production is close. Brent Clark this year is over a point per game, but he's not even close to be as good a skater and he's not even close to be as good as an overall player. So... Uh, yeah, I think Simon Emmett has a really good career in front of him. If we take a look at the strength and weaknesses, uh, if you just judge the numbers on this page, you'd ask yourself, like, why is he number two? Like, Logan Cooley has better numbers than that. Miroš Nichenko has better numbers than that. It's just that when you combine his skating and his hockey sense, he's just a phenomenal player. But his playmaking, his compete, his shot, his puck skills are not spectacular. They're good. They're above an HL average most likely but they're they're not they're not phenomenal but when you take his skating and his hockey sense the player he becomes is just uh, a very complete very good NHL defenseman I'm he's he's like it's almost sure he's going to be a top 4 there's very very good chance that he's going to be a, a top line defender and there's also a very good chance that he's going to be a number one defender because he can attack and he can defend a high level the only thing is i think he's going to have to learn to be a little more aggressive and less passive uh when he attacks and when he defends in the nhl so that's the only thing all right so let's go take a look at chain right now so here i have mr number one shane Wright. so we can see that in the rankings, he's pretty much number one everywhere except for ISS Hockey. And a couple riders like Curry Promen, Chris Peter have don't have him at number one either. I'm not sure if it's number two or number three, but uh, they don't have him at number one. Uh, if we take a look at his stats, like I said in the video I made about him, his stats are great. They're just not amazing. They're just not what you want from a number one overall. Because 94 points in 63 games is great. But it's not amazing. And you want amazing at number one. But if you take if you go back a little bit and you take a look at his rookie season, he had 66 points in 58 games and almost 40 goals. And, I mean, that's a rookie season. It's phenomenal. And then you take last year where he played in the U18 and had 14 points in 5 games while playing sick. That's, <laughs> that's just even better. And then this year... It's only 94 points. So everybody was expecting a lot more. Nobody got it. But one of the major reasons for that is the fact that he played with young players. The fact that he had a team that couldn't break out the puck whatsoever. He was the one doing the breakout because nobody could do it. And he's coming back down low every every single shift to help his defender with the defense. So um, I, overall, if, if he thought a little bit more about himself than he did about the team, his production would have been better. Which is one of the reasons why I kept it at number one because I think he could have easily passed 110 points or something like that if he was a little bit more selfish and if he played with better player and a better breakout team. So it is what it is. But at the same time, we're, we don't know. We're going to see if that's what <laughs> we're going to see if he's that kind of player. So uh, let's go take a look at the player that he compares to. So at 1.49 point per game, uh, there's not many players around there that you would like as a first overall because, except for, I mean, Eric Stoll, of course, but player like uh, 
Logan Couture or Nick Suzuki, they're excellent player, but they're not the player that you want at number one overall. At number one overall, you want a franchise changing player. You want a player that's going to take your team on his shoulder and bring it to the playoff and then bring it to the cup. You want that type of player. And he's not showing that he's that this year. He showed it in the past. So let's just hope that he's going to go back to that type of player. But if you take into account the fact that he played uh, he played hard defensively and uh, he didn't have a great team with him, his production would probably be much higher than that and you could put him in the same stratosphere as uh, Zvechnikov or uh, uh, John Tavares and Stamkos, player like that. That's, uh, that's where I would put him. So if we take a look at his strength and weaknesses card, um, I bumped him up a little bit because uh, he's the first video that I made and I was a little bit bullish on the numbers that I've put there. And so I bumped up every player after him. So here I bumped up his player, his, his numbers a little bit. So skating seven, and that's strange because if you compare him to other skater, uh, like in, in a combine or if in a, the rookie, the rookie game, he, he was one of the best skater. But then in game, he's mostly above average, and that's it. His hockey sense eight out of ten, and uh, I'm, I wouldn't debate anybody who tells me it's elite at nine out of ten because. That's the name of his game. The way he understands the game, the way he predicts he predicts everything, that's that's the player he is. He's just a very cerebral, very, very smart player. Playmaking, 7.5 out of 10. Uh, compete, 6.5. And I mean, his compete, 6.5, it's mostly because you don't see him work hard. He, he works smart. Okay, so when, when, he's, uh, when he's in defense, like he's not trying to pin you down the board and rip the puck out of you or something like that he's just placing his stick and placing his body in a smart way to try to get the puck and prevent you from doing a high danger pass his shot 8 out of 10 he has a very good shot and i would give him a 9 out of 10 if he if he would diversify his shot a little bit he only has a wrist shot that's it he has no in stride snapshot he has no slap shot he has no uh one timer it's just a wrist shot and that's all he has so it's a really good one but that's all he has. So if he diversifies his shot, he's going to have an elite shot. That's for sure. And puck skills, 7 out of 10 because he doesn't show it. So maybe maybe he's high end. I don't know. He just never shows his hand. He never dangles the puck to his leg, never attacks the triangle of a defender. All he does is attract player to himself and then saucer a pass to an open player. That's all he does. <laughs> so i mean it's gonna be i think it's gonna be very effective in the nhl i think it's the type of game that he plays is a type of game that you want from a number one center the type of game that you want from a player that's gonna help your team win because being logan cooley and skating as fast as he does and then putting the puck through your legs and then you end up being surrounded by two defender uh didn't help your team but if you skate uh, along the wing with the with the puck and you attract two defenders to yourself and then pass the puck to an open teammate well then you helped your team so very different players very different way of making uh, of creating but uh, i think shane Wright in the end is worthy of the number one overall spot uh, on my ranking all right so there you go for my top 10 i hope you enjoyed the, like I said, this is more a talent evaluation top 10 than it is a mock draft. Because obviously, if your team is picking at number 6, don't tell me we're not taking Miro Shinchenko. I already know that. But uh, please comment if you have somebody in your top 10 like a Matejchuk where most people don't see there. Just let me know. And uh, please subscribe or like the video as it would help the channel get more views. And uh, once again, thanks a lot for watching. Have a good day. Blue Chip Prospect. Peace out.